Hey what's up guys welcome back this is Dinesh here and in this video I'll be showing you how to create your very first Android virtual device or an emulator that will work on your Windows 32 bit or 64 bit operating system. In this video I'll also be talking about how to install Hacksup installer which will further allow you to run the emulator a little faster. But before we create an Android virtual device let us first see how your Windows system is categorized based on processor and system type. A Windows PC basically has two different types of processors. First is the Intel and second is an AMD processor. After the processor comes the system type. So you will have either a 32-bit operating system also known as the x86 or an 64-bit operating system. So guys before creating an Android virtual device you should first know these two things which processor you use and what is the system type. So to know both these things, I'll first minimize my Android Studio. After that, you have to right click on your My Computers and then click on Properties. I'll right click on My Computer and after that, I'll click on Properties. After clicking on Properties, you will get this window over here. My processor is Intel and my system type is 64-bit operating system. Now, once you know your system type and your processor, you can just close this window open Android Studio again, just click on this option which says SDK Manager. Now after clicking on SDK Manager, click on this option which says Launch Standalone SDK Manager. So the SDK Manager will take some time to load. Inside your SDK Manager, you need to download three basic packages depending upon your system configuration. If these packages are installed previously, then you do not need to download and install them again. So for those of you who have an Intel processor running on a 32-bit operating system, you should be downloading these two packages over here. So this is the first package and I will just uncheck all these packages over here since I do not need them right now. So as I was telling before, if you're running an Intel processor on a 32-bit operating system, so just check this package over here and check this package over here. Okay. So now the major difference between both these packages is that both of them are suitable for Intel processor th running on 32-bit but this one comes with a Google API. Now these two packages are useful for creating your Android virtual device. We basically call them as system images. Now for those of you who have an Intel processor running on 64-bit operating system, you can just go ahead and download these two packages over here which says Intel x86 Atom underscore 64 system image and Google API Intel x86 64 system image. So as you can see, I've just downloaded this package from start. So this is installed in my system. So I'm downloading this thing again. Now for those of you who have an AMD processor, regardless of whether it is 32 bit or 64 bit, you must go ahead and download these two packages like the Google API, ARM EABI and this ARM EABI system image. Okay. So for people running on AMD, just download this image which says ARM. Now you can see on top there are SDK. Now if you see on top there are SDK images for Android TV and Android Wear. We are not working with Android Wear and TV right now. We may work with them in the future. But since we are not working with them, please make sure that these packages are unchecked. Now the third package that you should be downloading is called the Intel Hexim. And you will get this package at the bottom. So if I come down, I will just uncheck this Google USB driver. If you come down, you see this package by the name of Intel x86 emulator. Now this package is useful only for people who have an Intel processor. So for people who are using AMD processors, it's better you do not download it because it's not going to be installed. So as you can see, I first only installed this one, but please make sure guys, depending upon your system type, you install the three packages. So once you've selected your proper package, just click on install three packages or install two packages, whatever it is.
you have installed the Hacksam installer, now comes the time to create an Android virtual device. If you see this icon over here, it says ABD Manager. So click on this option which says ABD Manager. You will be brought to this window. So guys, click on Create Virtual Device. So please make sure that you check a Nexus 5 device and after you check it, click on Next. Currently, I run on a Marshmallow system like my android virtual device is running on marshmallow that is api 23 this is showing me my system image that is x86 64 and my target is android 6.0 but as you can see in the bracket it says with google api and it because i've downloaded the google api system image now once we check the settings click on next again this step is critically important because in this you need to set your ram to a particular value so what I will do is, I will just leave this option as it is. If you want, you can change the AVD name. I'll keep the AVD name as it is. Go to show advanced settings and in the advanced setting, if you come down, please make sure that your RAM should be 1 GB. Sometimes the RAM is set to 1536 MB. If you set it to that value, that's fine. But I've often seen that, a that at a value of 1536 MB, your emulator may not boot up properly. So this is one procedure that I found helpful on my computer system. So it's better you guys change your RAM to 1 GB if it's saying 1536. So I made the RAM already 1 GB. You can leave the rest of the settings as it is. You do not need to touch any of these settings. Just click finish. So after you click on finish, the Android virtual device will now create a virtual device for you. So guys, as you can see now, my virtual device has been created. Now, without wasting much of a time, what I'll do is I'll just click on this play button over here. So, I'll click on the play button. So, your Android virtual device has been successfully created. And once your device is successfully created, it will take some time to reboot or I can say it will take some time to restart. My Android virtual device is been loaded completely. I'll just click on got it. After that, if I click on this home button over here, it will show me all the apps that are there. Now, I won't be playing around with the Android virtual device right now because we also have to check the output of our change text application. So I'll just minimize my AVD for the time being. I'll close this Android virtual device right now. I'll just open up the AVD for a minute now. The next thing that I'll be doing is I'll click on the play button over here. So now as you can see my device chooser has come up over here and over here it's just showing me one emulator Nexus 5 API 23 device which is this device over here. So I'll just keep this selected after that I'll click OK. Now after I click OK you'll see in some time my application will run inside the Nexus 5 API 23 emulator. Now, as you can see guys, I have my application loaded inside my system and this basically says the name of my application is change text. I have a text view, I have a button over here and if I click on this button, change the above quote, you will see the text view has changed and the text view says the harder you work, the luckier you get. So I hope all of you would have got this output. We have been making this app in the last two videos and in this video I actually showed you how to create an Android virtual device for both your Intel as well as AMD processors running on 32-bit or 64-bit operating system. So I'll just stop this video over here. In the meantime, if you like this video, please hit the like button at the bottom and if you want to learn Android from scratch, then go ahead and click on the subscribe button. Thank you guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Now, the next video is really important because during the time you're creating this Android virtual device, you would have realized how much time the virtual device takes to load. So to reduce your effort, next we'll be creating one more Android virtual device by the name of Jenny Motion, which is one of the fastest virtual devices currently. So I'll catch you in the next video where we'll be installing the Jenny Motion virtual device. Thank you guys. Take care.